Hello everyone. As you know, we are having a discussion on resistance as uh, derived from the formalism that we discussed and as we understand from our classical understanding of semiconductor devices. So, we are contrasting these two uh, type of uh, or the resistance from these two formalisms. And uh, uh, the classical understanding of resistance says that that in a uh, typically in a 1D, 2D or 3D in any kind of conductor, the resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor like this. In case of 1D conductor, it is just the length of the, uh, it is proportional to the length of the conductor. In case of 2D conductor, it is directly proportional to the length, inversely proportional to the width. Similarly, in 3D conductor, it is directly proportional to the length, inversely proportional to the area. This constant of proportionality is known as the resistivity and the inverse of resistivity in the material is known as conductivity. That is the classical picture of uh, transport that we have in our mind. From our formalism uh, of the general model of transport, we deduced this expression of the conductance of the device. It is G is equal to 2 q square by H integration of T e m e over the Fermi window minus del f by del e times d e. And uh, we started the discussion for low temperature case, what happens at low temperatures in a ballistic conductor. And at low temperatures in a ballistic conductor, the conductance turns out to be 2 q square by h times m e f. This is at t equal to 0 Kelvin for ballistic case. Okay. This term 2 q square by h is known as the quantum of conductance. It is the conductance of the single channel of the electron in the devices and its value is 1 by 12.9 kilo ohms. From this uh, sort of derivation or this analysis, we could see that for a 2D conductor, 2D ballistic conductor, the resistance is independent of the length as opposite to the our classical understanding, our conventional understanding of the resistance. So, that is the key difference. So, that is why uh, in our modern nanoscale devices, we can no longer use the conventional understanding of electron transport. We need to have a fundamentally different kind of theory of transport and that is what we are doing in this course. After that, we are uh, currently studying the transport in, uh, uh, studying the resistance in ballistic conductor at 0 Kelvin, but now a wide conductor. That is where our discussion was stopped in the last class. So, we have a, a conductor, uh, let us say of length L width W and uh, it is a ballistic conductor which means that electrons do not collide with anything in between, they directly go from the left terminal to the right terminal. And uh, because of the temperature being 0 Kelvin, now we can say that all the electronic states up to energy EF are filled. all electronic states are filled. So, if we need to calculate uh, the resistance here, we again begin with the same uh, expression of the conductance which is 2 q square by h. In ballistic case T e is 1, so we are just left with m e and essentially minus del f by del e d e and at 0 Kelvin this expression essentially boils down to m e f. This is the ballistic conductor at 0 Kelvin. Now, uh, this term, this m e f, this we can uh, put it uh, the form of this from our derivation, which is essentially w times square root of uh, 
e minus e c divided by pi h bar to m star as well. Or we can uh, correlate this term to a to an experimental parameter which is generally the sheet carrier density in a 2D conductor which is the number of electrons per unit area. So, this is given this or this can be deduced from the experiments. For example, I gave you an example of Hall effect experiment. So, if we know the Hall coefficient of the material, we can deduce the sh uh, sheet carrier density by measuring the Hall voltage of the uh, that particular material. So, this parameter is generally available from the experiments and we would like to correlate uh, this MEF with this parameter. And for that, we need to go back to the k space. So, this is k x, k y. The conductor physically looks like this. In x direction, it has certain length, in y direction, it has certain width. So, the allowed k points or the values of the k points where a valid electronic wave function exists in this material is given by the solution of the Schrodinger equation and we obtain these kind of points. These are essentially pi by L, 2 pi by L, 0 on the y axis we have pi by W, 2 pi by W and so on. And since the temperature is 0 Kelvin, all the energy states up to E f are filled which means that all the k points up to k equal to k f are filled, k from 0 to k f are filled, where k f is given by square root of 2 m e 2 m star e f by h bar. This comes from the E k relationship. Okay. So, the total number of electrons will be inside this circle of radius k f. If this is the radius of the cir this circle is k f, the total number of electrons or the sheet carrier density in the material will be given by the area of this circle in the k space. And what is the area here? Or number of electrons at t equal to 0 Kelvin will be number of electrons electronic states more precisely electronic states in the circle of area covered by radius k f. Now, how many electrons are there in this circle? That will be given by the number of electrons will be the area of the circle divided by the area occupied by one electron or one electronic state. So, if we divide the area of the circle by the area of one electronic state that will give us the total number of electronic states in the or total number of electrons in the system. So, essentially this is what we need to calculate in this case and uh, the area of the circle is simply pi k f square, but what is the area that a single electronic state occupies? So, in the case space if we have a closed look on the k space, 
these are the uh, okay so generally this is the area occupied by one electronic state however we also saw in our discussion of density of states that this set of k values and this set of k values and this set of k values and this set of k values they essentially represent the same wave function so what we can say is that the total the area occupied by an electron is this or if we consider the spin this is the area occupied by two electrons so two electrons one with up spin one with down spin will occupy this amount of area so area of one electron will be and what is the area this is 2 pi by l length and 2 pi by w width so the area will be 2 pi by l times 2 pi by w so it will be 4 pi square by l times w or 4 pi square by a this is the area occupied by two electronic states if we consider the spins as well so the area occupied by one electronic state is 4 pi square by a by 2 so it will be 2 pi square by a okay now we can uh, sort of see the total number of electrons in the system from this expression so total number of electrons will be the area of the circle which is pi k f square divided by the area of the single electron which is 2 pi square by a so pi so it is a times k f square divided by 2 pi and the sheet carrier density will be the total number of electrons divided by area so it it will be n by a which means ns can be written as k f square by 2 pi okay so that way we have a relationship between ns and kf vector okay in other words uh, this kf is essentially square root of 2 pi ns So let us just keep this uh, equation with us k s is square root of 2 pi n s and uh, if we use uh, this expression for a 2 D conductor which is essentially the number of modes in a 2 D conductor is w times m 2 d e also written as w times k divided by pi or w divided by lambda b by 2 where lambda b is the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons ok. So using this expression now this m 2 d e f uh, from here we can see that m 2 d e is actually w and w will go away k by pi so m 2 d e f is k f divided by pi and from the previous uh, analysis k f is square root of 2 pi n s this divided by pi so m2d ef now is 
square root of 2 n s pi pi. So, we now have this number of modes parameter in terms of the basic or experimental parameter of the device n s in terms of n s. And if we keep uh, if we uh, replace this uh, in the conductance expression, the ballistic conductance at 0 Kelvin of the conductor is 2 q square by h times n E f where m is w times m 2 d E f. So, it becomes w times 2 q square by h square root of 2 n s by pi. So, this is the finally the ballistic conductance of a 2 d conductor 2 n s by pi or the resistance ballistic resistance will be the inverse of this which is essentially 1 by w h by 2 q square square root of pi by 2 n s. <coughs> now, as is uh, also clear from this expression that the ballistic resistance is independent of the length as we also expect because the electron is not colliding throughout the length. So, that is why the length is not important in resistance. It is however, inversely proportional to the width because more the width more will be the number of modes in the transistor, more will be the conductance, less will be the resistance. Apart from that, it is inversely proportional to the sheet carrier density which is also expected because more the number of electrons available in the conductor for transport, less will be the resistance or more will be the conductance. And now, apart from that, we have a fundamental constant or the quantum of conductance constant in these expressions. Okay. So, this is uh, pretty much uh, what we have in our 2 d conductor at 0 Kelvin and with a finite width. Okay. Up to now, we have only considered the case of 0 Kelvin at extremely low temperatures, but now let us consider a more realistic case. So, the case when the temperature is room temperature or it is beyond or it is above 0 Kelvin temperature. And because of this, because of the room temperature case or a higher temperature scenario, we can no longer make this assumption. We cannot approximate uh, the Fermi window by a delta function because this is only possible at 0 Kelvin. So, now this uh, needs to be explicitly calculated and th this becomes uh, one of the main things to do in these calculations actually. So, uh, so here we have uh, again we uh, to in order to calculate the resistance of a 2 d resistor at room temperature let us say we start with the formula of the conductance which is 2 q square by h integration of T e m e minus del f by del e d e. And now, this term needs to be explicitly calculated and this is a tedious calculation I would say. Okay. So, uh, if we put the, uh, the Fermi function uh, explicitly in this expression, it becomes uh, g is 2 q square by h T e m e minus del by del e 1 by 1 plus exponential e minus e f by k t integrated over energies. This derivative minus del by del e so, this uh, minus del by del E f is equivalently can be it can be written as del by del E f of f. 
So minus del f by del e can be written as del f by del e f. And by making this substitution, we can essentially bring uh, this uh, derivative term outside the integral. In ballistic case, T e is 1. So, so if we make this substitution, the ballistic conductor at uh, the conductance of the ballistic conductor at uh, higher temperatures is it, it becomes if we bring del by del E f integration of m e 1 by 1 plus exponential e minus E f by k t d e. Now, this entire calculation, this entire integral needs to be evaluated along with this differential and this becomes a non-trivial calculation actually. For most of the practical applications, this becomes a non, uh, becomes a difficult uh, thing to do. Uh, so, that is why uh, this is finally the, if we uh, also write it down explicitly uh, m e which is essentially, so if we write down m e to be w times square root of 2 m star e minus e c divided by pi h bar. So, then this ballistic conductance formula uh, essentially becomes this formula can be written down as G ballistic is equal to 2 q square by h del by del E f. Now, if we put instead of m e we put this then w by so, this may come out w by pi h bar will come out w by pi h bar will come out and even square root of 2 m star can also be taken out. We are left with the, this derivative term and the integral of e minus e c power half divided by 1 plus exponential e minus e f by k t d e. So, this is finally, this formula will be uh, or the conductance of the ballistic conductor will become. It has a range of constants here, then a derivative and then an integral. So, this is a combination of, uh, so we need to first integrate then take a derivative with respect to E f. And as I mentioned that it is a difficult uh, thing to do, so uh, and that is why uh, generally this expression which is essentially the same that was there in the, this is evaluated, uh, this, this kind of integrals are separately evaluated and they are separately categorized as Fermi Dirac integrals. Fermi Dirac integrals. Because these kind of integrals they appear quite often in solid state uh, physics, especially in uh, the ballistic transport and in the calculations of the conductance or even in the calculations of the uh, IV characteristics at room temperature, similar kind of integrations appear there. Okay. So, these are known as the Fermi Dirac integrals and the way to evaluate them is to make this change of variables. So, a new variable eta is defined which is uh, given as E minus E c by k t. Generally in these derivations it is written as k b times T l, k b is the Boltzmann constant, T l is the lattice temperature which we are short, uh, in short writing as k times t. And another parameter 
eta f is defined as E f minus E c by k t. So, if we make this uh, change of variables in this equation, then uh, this integral essentially this part of the integral del by del E f uh, this derivative and integral uh, square root of E minus E c divided by 1 plus exponential E minus E f by k t d e. So, this changes to square root of k t del by del eta f integral this if this limit is 0 to infinity this is also 0 to infinity square root of eta divided by 1 plus exponential eta minus eta f d eta. This is uh, just consider this to be a small exercise uh, just put uh, these variables uh, e minus e c replace uh, e by e minus e c by eta k t and e f minus e c by eta f k t and then see how this uh, derivative and integral changes this is the answer actually this is how it changes. So, just do it yourself that will give you uh, a more hands on uh, feel of this uh, expression. So, ultimately uh, in the calculation of the conductance of the material this uh, derivative along with the integral it changes to this. So, finally, we can write down the ballistic conductivity of a 2 D conductor 2 q square by h w times square root of 2 m star k t divided by pi h bar del by del eta f integral from 0 to infinity square root of eta 1 plus eta minus eta f d eta. So, these kind of integrals are known as the Fermi Dirac integrals and depending on the power of eta in the numerator here inside the integral the order of the Fermi Dirac integral is defined. So, in this case the power of eta is half. So, this is the Fermi Dirac integral of order half. Okay. So, uh, and this is how precisely the Fermi Dirac integral of order half is defined. It is 2 by square root pi integral 0 to infinity eta to the power 1 by 2 divided by 1 plus exponential eta minus eta f d n. So, it does not involve the derivative here. Yeah. So, so, earlier I mentioned that uh, this entirely is defined as the Fermi Dirac integral, but it is only this part that is defined as the Fermi Dirac integral. And there is an interesting property of the Fermi Dirac integral that if we take a derivative of the Fermi Dirac integral with respect to E f or eta f. So, if we do this with a Fermi Dirac integral, uh, let us say of order n then generally the Fermi Dirac integral of order it becomes a Fermi Dirac integral of order n minus 1. So, in this case uh, in the case of calculation of conductance for a 2 D conductor 2 D ballistic conductor at uh, room temperatures we have a Fermi Dirac integral of order half and we are taking a derivative with respect to eta. So, finally, uh, it will be a Fermi Dirac integral of order minus half because and this maths uh, we are not going in this the, in the detail of the maths uh, the Fermi uh, maths of Fermi Dirac integral, but uh, this is how finally everything will look like and this should be order minus half actually. 
So finally, the conductance of a ballistic 2D ballistic conductor at room temperature will be given by a set of constants and a Fermi Dirac integral of order minus half. Okay. So, I will let you think about this uh, replacement of variables by this change of variables through which we obtained uh, this Fermi Dirac integral uh, formulation and I would recommend you to go back and look at the Fermi Dirac integrals independently. I will also share some materials on them uh, and we will uh, start the next class this point onwards. We will have slightly more deeper understanding of this uh, final expression and that will essentially conclude the discussion of the conductance of the ballistic conductor at normal temperatures. Thank you for uh, your attention. See you in the next class.